Hey guys, welcome to SD Drain Ditch Training 2023. My name is Luke Halbachen. I'm the lead technician here at Rust Sales. And along with me, I have Scott Horvick, who is the marketing guy. Um, we're gonna be going through a bunch of slides today and, and the program as well uh, to show you guys a little bit more about SD Drain Ditch. So some of the 2022 uh, new features that you guys got in this latest update, surveyed backslopes. Uh, that will be surveying your backslope areas uh, as well as your ditch bottoms. Ability to manually drop flags. So this is marking out uh, points in your field that you guys want to come back to. Um, parabolic ditches. So for guys building waterways, this is more for guys down south. You guys have that option as well. It's pretty much a U-shaped ditch versus a V-shaped ditch. 300 foot ditch bottoms. This is just expanding the workable area that you guys have uh, to take advantage of in the program and GPS logging. This is recording field elevation data for those guys who can't get LIDAR or can't get up-to-date LIDAR. First off, our PX501 display. This is our newest computer that we have. We've, we've been selling it for about three and a half years now. It is a great computer. The touchscreen is awesome. The brightness of the screen is works really, really well, especially on those early morning, uh, late night days when the sun's putting a pretty nice glare on the screen. The screen really shines through and gives you guys a good visual to look at. And you can darken it with the F1, F2 buttons that are on the screen. So F1 would be brighter and F2 would be dimmer, just for guys uh, who already have it. Uh, and this is all wireless to the DAC 8000 controller. All of your cables will plug into this guy right here, and then it will stream wirelessly up to the 501 display. And this that, that is a standard configuration. There is another configuration where you might have some receiver antenna wires come in and plug them into the screen as well. So a standard configuration is all wireless though between the screen and the controller. PX5 Rover, this is that uh, configuration that you might have some antenna cables coming up to, but this mounts to the back of your computer. This is an in-house something that we have developed as a solution for guys who might not have RTK in their area or uh, for guys who want a standalone system for their ditching or tiling, in this case, ditch, uh, ditching software. Uh, you guys won't have to pull those John Deere globes away from your other pieces of equipment. You guys can have a standalone that works directly with your ditching software. And the nice thing about this is that this is the brain of the receiver. So it's mounted inside the cab on the back of your computer. And then we throw a dummy antenna on the back or up on the scraper. So it just keeps all of your expensive equipment in the cab safe out of the elements. And we just put a less expensive dummy antenna out on your piece of equipment. So that is the PX5 Rover. And then here's just the connections you guys can see here. Most guys just get a single GNSS uh, configuration. So those have position four and position three. There is a dual GPS, but I would say 95% of customers get the single because that's all they would need. That is the PX5R. Installation, we have the VX601 as well. This is a more ruggedized screen. It is a heavy duty screen meant for more open cab configurations. So for guys running with an open cab, this might be your solution. It is a wired connection. So COM1 GPS and COM2 is your controller then you'll have a power cable. Both these computers, the 501 and the 601, both have internal batteries. We just, you know, always just keep charging that that computer as you have. You can it's a nice for option for guys. It's a nice option for guys who are running like a four wheeler and want to have something out if they're just doing uh, tope wing ahead of time yep. out in the elements. Yep. yep. That is the VX601. Next, I'm going to talk about KMZ files for a little bit. So these files you will get with your purchase. Um, if you guys get background images made through Rust Sales, uh, you guys can get uh, called KMZ files, and you can display these on your iPhone or Android phone. iPhone, you would use an app called Google Earth, and Android is an app called Locus Free. These are just the free version maps that we recommend you guys try out and use. Um, but yeah, KMZ files, you can load them up. So and the example is like if you get a new guy going out to spray or, or somebody who doesn't quite know the field layout, he can see on this map where his potential wet spots are. So all these red, you know, blobs, those are potential hot spots or wet spots that he could try to avoid 
while he is uh, spraying. Because sometimes, you know, if there's a foot of coverage, you can't quite see where those wet spots are. So those are KMZ files. Next, we've got Rust Sales Service Tools. We have manuals.rustsales.com. This is our online help website that you guys can go to for quick cheat sheet guides, set up help, stuff like that. Download, you know, manuals if you need them. So check that out, manuals.rustsales.com. We also have remote support. This is huge for us when we guys support you or when we support you guys uh, out in the field, we can log into your computers, click around and help you guys change settings. Uh, if something goofy is going on, we have that ability to do so at the office. The online chat windows in the bottom right corner of our website, we have a Let's Chat bubble. Click on that, type in any question you may have, and a whole bunch of us at the office get those notifications when you guys have questions. So Let's Chat icon, click on that, type your question in, and we'll hopefully answer it as soon as we can. Remote support hotspots, just some instructions on how to turn those on. First, we have the Android instructions. So you'll go to settings, turn your personal hotspot on, uh, just like it is on the right and then connect it to your computer, just like you would any other Wi-Fi access point, like when you're connecting to your shop or home Wi-Fi, this works the exact same. You just have to set it up on your phone. So these are the Android instructions. iPhone instructions here, they're all relatively the same. You'll go to settings, personal hotspot. So here's your personal hotspot on an iPhone. Uh, check this on or swipe the tab over and then connect it to your computer, just like you would you know, the Android, iPhone, they're all the same, uh, just different manufacturers. John Deere installation for guys running green tractors, you guys will plug into the uh, tractor on the back. You'll remove the slow moving vehicle sign, take your cables from us with the tractor off, all power off, connect it, connect your controller. So the DAC 8000, get everything, you know, ready to go in the cab. Uh, so when you turn the key on, the DAC will power on, and then you're SCV screen should display auto with a line through it, indicating that your controller is connected and you are ready to roll. So for guys running John Deere tractors, just make sure you do it with the tractor off, plug your controller in, and then turn the key on and make sure that it says auto with a line through it on number one and three. Our cabling comes pre-pinned to control two SCVs. So if you guys need, or only if you need number three to be available to you, you can go ahead and pull a pin out of our cabling. Uh, just give us a call and we can help you <clears throat> with that as well. So pin or hydraulic one, typical scraping should be all you need if you're just running a, a scraper. So for Wolverines, if you wanna control that tilt as well, you would just leave it as a standard on three. Case installation, so 20 or 10 older. So tractors are pretty much all the same. Uh, the connector is outside of the cab. You'll connect to it uh, just like you would the John Deere power off, connect to it. Or 2011 and newer quad tracks, everything is inside of the cab. You open up that big side door, the side window door, and underneath the, uh, the cup holders, you'll find your connection. So plug everything in. And then on your armrest, you have a 1 3 switch that enables your hydraulics. But you'll have to click this number one switch on for number one hydraulic to work. Or if you're using dual control, it'll be both one and three. This is an old version of the rocker switch, so look for that on your armrest. If your tractor has not been configured for this operation, we have instructions for setup in our installation manual. You guys can walk through the steps of programming the corner post to enable your 1-3 switches. Again, the front wheel assist tractors, uh, the connection is behind the slow, slow moving vehicle sign, so just take that panel off, find the plug, it should be a little six pin Deutsch plug. Most likely it's got a, uh, a dust cap on it. Take that off and make your connection. The new case armrests for guys getting into some of the newer tractors. You guys will see this, the Pro 1200 monitors. You'll go, there's, there's some setup obviously to these as well, but we do have instructions in our manuals. So follow that. Go click on your tractor icon, go to your remotes, and then go to your auto auxiliary control valve. And depending on your equipment, turn both turn just A or both A and B on. Then you can select the remotes on the rear of the tractor that you are plugged into. After that, you'll program this little gray strip right here as your one three switch. So pick two buttons that you, you would like to use and then program the, those to turn your SCVs on and off. 
generic GPS settings, these are some of the settings that we require. This is what these are the settings we require, but obviously for different uh, manufacturers of RTK globes, you might not be able to get these exact settings. So what we do is we give you a cheat sheet guide showing you what we recommend for each individual globe. So John Deere guys, these this is these are the settings for your globes. So we should we do send a cheat sheet with you guys on your purchase of SD drain. But if you've lost that, here it is. Otherwise, it's on that manuals.russsales.com website for you guys to take a look at. We have a programming kit. This is nice for guys running tower network. If you guys end up switching towers a lot while you're ditching, this is a nice quick way to switch um, from one tower to the next as you guys switch fields. So it plugs into the ISO plug behind on the back of your tractor. Then that T, there's a little T that gets installed and then this runs up to the cab with an extension. And all you'll do is make one connection in the cab. It plugs into the main power harness. There's a larger 12 pin uh, connector and this plugs into the smaller three pin. So it looks just like this three pin uh, right next to that 12 pin on the main power harness. Just a quick way for you guys to program and change your globe uh, network numbers and IDs. Trimble configuration. So guys running Trimble, you do have to hardwire uh, or connect to the computer to program your globe. So you might have to move a cable if you're running the wireless configuration. So just plug that cable in the top right of the computer, go to Ag Remote, hit File, then tap Connect. You should see your globe and information populate in this window. Run through the configuration instructions that we provide you, and then you should be ready to roll. So um, again, if you have any issues, um, feel free. We can hopefully help you out. Give us a call to program your globes. Egg leaders, 6,500 and 7,500 globes. Again, we do have a program on the computer that you guys can use to change the settings on your globe. The 6,500, um, you'll run through this Novatel config. It's a little bit easier to do it through Novatel config. So just connect your, you know, again, just like Trimble, we got a hardwired connection, connect to your computer, program your globe, then disconnect, and you should be ready to roll along with. So the 7500, uh, it's a little bit easier to do. There's a Wi Fi version to configure the settings on your globe. And we have instructions again for both of these in our manuals as well. So these are the 6500 and 7500 receivers. Again, just to repeat, you do have to have RTK quality GPS. So if you guys do not have RTK, uh, see if you can get a source of that uh, to you. Okay, so starting the program, I'm just going to get into SD drain here a little bit. So I'm going to exit the slides and double click on your SD drain ditch icon on your desktop. Tap agree. Then this first page, give me one second here. I'm just going to disable my GPS quick. So it doesn't start barking at us. Color as well. So, okay, so this would have been the first page that you come to when you open up SD drain. This is all of your data management. So the way that I would recommend creating different fields, uh, farms and stuff like that, most likely the grower will not change. So this is mostly, this is probably gonna be the owner of SD Green Ditch. The farm, depending on if you do stuff for your neighbor um, or just yourself, you might you know, end up adding another farm in the field. So hit the plus button, type in the name of the farm, hit okay, and you'll see from the dropdown, you can get, you'll get different uh, names here as you add. Same with the field. So this is what I highly recommend. When you guys switch fields, make sure that you also add a field to this list. So hit the plus button, type in the name of the field, and then you can select those fields as you move in between fields. I've seen a lot of guys come or they need help organizing their data and they've got all 3000 acres of their farm in one overhead map. Well, it's really hard to uh, decipher and, and separate all that into, into individual fields. So right away off the bat, guys keep selecting different fields as you move between fields. And then here are all the projects that you've been working on inside of those fields. If you're new to the day, or if you're just getting out there and starting to ditch that field, just select new project and hit continue. But if you're coming back from a previous day, click on that same dated project. That way you can keep everything in that field on the same map. 
you'll start to accumulate a whole bunch of ditch lines up on top. So just make sure you keep clicking the same date. Otherwise, new project for guys running uh, into a new field. And then this next page for demonstration purposes, I do have a pre-planned um, field already des designed. And you guys can do this as well, but it's a lot easier just to get out there and survey your ditches. But I've got some ditch lines I'm going to load as a shape file. I have elevation maps. I do have a LIDAR image that I can load. Background images, and I can do either. You know, there's a whole different array of maps that you get when you purchase them through us. The watersheds, just an example here, you can see where the colors meet. This is where your watershed breaks are. So this is the top or a peak in the field, potentially a spot that you can dump dirt. Um, so you can see all of the green, everything here flows generally one direction. Purple, everything flows generally, you know, away from the green, but down into the bottom right corner of the field here. So that is your watersheds map. Another one we can load is a flow depressions. And this actually shows the uh, natural accumulation or flow of water throughout a field. So you can see the more red uh, blobs that show up versus, you know, you've got these darker lines as well. You can see that that is the natural flow of water. You can see there's some ditch lines down here. Another ditch is running along the bottom here. So if you load these maps, you can just run out, ditch these lines, the more solid accumulation lines, and then be done with that field. You can load benchmarks if you're using those, uh, or boundaries if you've got some boundaries made. I've got a couple here. I'm just going to load my watersheds. You'll see those load, those extra lines that popped up here. Uh, and then I'm going to hit Start Project. So once you've got all your maps that you want to see on the overhead, go ahead and hit start project. And then we'll get to- Hey, Luke. Meeting. Yep. So for guys who don't have any kind of maps or any kind of lines or anything, they can just blow past that, that section and then their overhead layer is just gonna be blank until they start doing a survey line, correct? Okay. Yes. So guys, for guys who don't have maps yet, um, I would strongly suggest getting into them, but if you don't have them, you can still ditch and do everything you want with this program you would just hit continue or start project on that page so yeah if you don't have maps don't worry about it you can still ditch but uh just kind of giving you guys an example of what these maps can provide to you so i'm just going to run around the screen here i'm going to start in the top right here we have the start survey button when you're at the top or the bottom of your ditch you do have to survey the land or get you know collect that elevation data of that ditch so you'll hit start survey and you will drive the ditch. And then once you get to the end, hit stop survey. And then you can go ahead and turn around with the auto enable button down here, turn your screen on. And if you're running Case or John Deere tractors, you do have to enable that number one hydraulic like we talked about before. So enabling on your armrest, the one three switch. Otherwise, John Deere tractors just clicking that SCV forward into auto. Below start survey, we have zoom in, zoom out, and those do exactly what you could imagine zoom in, zoom out does. And we already talked about the auto enable button. The line menu, uh, this is a menu that keeps track of all of your lines on the above map. So whether you have survey, cut lines, guidance lines, I have guidance lines loaded, that's why there's a D right here. If you had surveys, you would see an S, and it just separates everything on the above map and keeps everything organized. So if you wanted to hide, let's say you were surveying a ditch and you wanted to make a couple different surveys to see what the better direction was to create that ditch, uh, you can hide the survey that you do not want to use. That way you're not confused as to which one uh, you're going to cut on. So if you want to do that, go to the line menu, click on the ditch in the above map. You can see that this green one is now selected. So there's my green line here. And I'm going to just hit the eyeball button. And you can see that this line will now disappear. And let's just say I did the wrong one and I want to bring it back up. Make sure you find that line and go ahead and hit the eyeball button. And you'll see this thing reappear. And that's just to keep your screen nice and clean so you're not uh, confused as to which lines you want to use and not use. So that is the line menu. There's a couple other features in here you can view. So let's just say I know what kind of the side profile this ditch looks like. Well, I can't see it right now. Um, so if I hit the globe button here, it's going to push this line menu up above, and then it's going to show the side profile view of this run or of this ditch 
on the bottom, just to give you guys a view of what actually is going on. And if you select the different lines, you can see those down below how they change or differ from each other. So I'm going to click this graph again, this graph icon, put it down, and we'll get our overhead map back up. And really, that's a whole lot. That's really all the line menu is used for, at least you know, a simple version of what it's used for. If you want to get out of the line menu, go ahead and click the briefcase again. And now we're back to our main run screen. Below the line menu, we have settings. If you're ever lost in this program, I should mention this button. So bottom right will only take you to two locations. You either have settings or main screen. So you see how it only brings you to two locations. Um, we'll go through our settings in a bit here, but this, this, these are your settings. So I'm going to go back to main screen. Next button I'm going to go over is going to be your edit button. So just to find a nice ditch to show you guys how the edit window works, I'm going to select this one up here. So you can see I have this green one here selected. Uh, the selected ditch will show up as green. You guys see that? So now I'm going to go to the edit window. Let's just say I want to fill in this depression. So I did a, I ran a survey of this ditch. Now instead of cutting out this dirt right here, so I've got 63.1 yards to cut out. Instead, I want to fill this area in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the edit window. And now I can move this bottom screen around with my finger. And I'm going to move it to about right there. I'm going to zoom in a couple of times so I can get a better view. What you can do is you can place two X's. So I'm going to place one on top of this hill and then on top of this hill. And it's going to shoot a straight line from X to X. I'm going to hit preview. Now you guys can see that I'm actually filling in uh, with yellow, so yellow is fill, green is going to be cut, and I'm actually going to fill in this area. And it will cut two grades, so I would just start dumping a whole bunch of dirt in this area and come back once you think you have enough, and it will cut it two grade in this area that you're filling. That is just a little quick feature of the edit window. If you don't like your changes, go ahead and click undo right here, and then you can start over again by placing those X's. Another thing you can do in the edit window is you can adjust your grade, so your min grade, max grade, EGL offset, and we'll go over what these settings mean in a bit, but pretty much the takeaway is that uh, SD drain designs the run based off of your min grade and your max grade. So min grade is 0.05, which is about six inches every thousand feet. So SD drain is going to make sure that water flows when it's perfectly flat, so that is what your min grade does. Um, so that is pretty much the edit window and what guys use it for. I am going to hit done editing, get out of there. On the bottom of the screen, we have our side profile. Just some bits of information about this. On the left side, we have an elevation graph here to show you guys how or where elevations are throughout the screen. Um, then on the bottom, we have a legend. This displays your cut yards, so 63.1 yards cut, fill yards of zero yards. Length 57 or 1,578 1, feet, and then a min slope, whatever your min slope is set to for this ditch. So that is the side profile on the bottom here. In and the, the, middle, the, the, the cut, the uh, in the bottom there where you have the cut as 63.1 yards, uh, that's a that's an estimate, uh, not like uh, you know, based on. on on how wide your ditch is and and how much dirt you're going to take out so it's not anything that's like a solid it's not like a solid in you know set in stone number it's a it's a good estimate for you to see what uh how many yards you're going to be taking out yeah correct yeah we try to give you just a an estimate so you guys can actually just compare some surveys yep so, good point um, in the middle of your side profile window, this is a new feature that was added, and you do have to enable it. But you can see here, if I tap on this button, you do have some flags that you can drop. So this was that uh, manual flags button that I was talking about previously. But if you click on this, as you're driving, wherever your indicator is throughout the field, and you click a flag to drop, it's going to drop it in that exact location. So it's not like a pick and place. It's a click on it, and it places it where your vehicle is. So that is a new feature that you turn on. So I will show you that later, where to turn that on. To the left here, we have a button, and this is your cut mode button. You click on that, we've got design, pass, and single. 
I will go over with videos on this later in the training. So just stay tuned for that. To the left of that, we have the window button. If you click on that, I've got 3D map, back profile, and side profile with a LiDAR image loaded. So that .grd file, uh, you can actually create a 3D map of your fields. You guys can see this. This is all 3D now. If you guys really need to exaggerate the 3D terrain, you guys can use this button right here. You can see how that is exaggerating my data. It's nice for you know really figuring out where those depressions are in your field and taking advantage of that. I'm going to zoom it back out here a little bit. Another thing with the 3D display is that that's a heads up display uh, as opposed to a north up display. So um, that picture is actually going to rotate as a heads up in the direction that you're driving. Um, whereas a standard overhead map is going to be a, a north up display. Correct. Yep. Yep. So I'm going to just get out of my 3D map here by clicking on the overhead map. It'll bring us back to here. Zoom out a little bit so you guys can see. I'm going to click on this window again, and I'm going to select back profile. So just take note that this is your side profile showing you a side snapshot of the ditch. If you click on back profile. It'll bring up another little window, and this is your back sloping feature. So just I'm going to select this line here from the map and watch when I turn my back sloping on. Do you see those extra lines that appear? This is now displaying your back sloping parameters. So anything between the solid the solid line you guys can operate in and it will cut a back slope. Um, if I zoom in here a little bit, notice I've got dash line, dash line. So that is indicating your ditch bottom and anything outside. So from dash line to solid is going to cut a back slope uh, and a uh, anything from dash. So dash to dash is dish bottom dash to solid is your back slope area. So the parameters that change in that are going to be your you can have a, a back sloping ditch width. So that's going to be between the dotted lines and then the, the actual. Um, slope area is going to be where those solid lines are from the dashed lines to the solid lines. Another cool thing is you can see your slope number in the upper right hand corner of the back slope window. That's actually going to show up if you look at the chevrons on the left hand side. That number is going to also show up there and then that little box is going to be turned green when the back sloping function is active. If you turn it off, then uh, back sloping, you can see that the back sloping feature is not going to be on. So even if you uh, minimize the back slope window, you can still see that that green box is on so that you can see that back sloping is activated by the green box being on, as well as, you know, on the overhead view, you would see um, the uh, back sloping lines on your line that you're actually cutting. Yep, so as I select the other ones, you can see that that actually indi another indicator to, add to tell that back sloping is on. So I'm actually just going to close and shut down uh, back sloping. So I'll turn it off here. Then I'm going to close my back sloping window. Click on back profile. And actually, if you wanted to view this whole map, like if you wanted to do some pre planning and get a bigger view, you could minimize your side profile window as well. So to do that, click on the window button and hit side profile. And now you can see I've got my whole map um, and I can view everything at once throughout the whole window. So just if you guys are doing some pre-planning and want a bigger view of that field, do that as well. I'll bring my side profile you, back up. You can also just like tap on that, um, those up and down arrows and hold and slide it up and down and that's going to change the size of your overhead window and your lower window. Most guys just keep it default as to where it is, but if you wanted to get a little bit more real estate on the top uh, window or the bottom window, you can sure that I do that by just tapping and holding it and sliding it and then, you know, set it back into the center. So it's um, going to be at its default spot. Um, so uh, we went, we just went through our window button here. So side profile down below. Um, to the left here, uh, we've got the nudge arrows left top. These are to move your grade line up and down. So let's just say I went and I cut out all the green here, but I wanted to make my ditch a couple inches lower. So 
So if I just tap the nudge arrow down, I just nudge down two more inches. So you can see I created another line here. And so if I keep tapping my nudges, I'm going to keep pushing that grade line down. Be careful with this button, though, if you guys are ditching up to culverts, because it does drop your outlet. So let's just say that you surveyed up to a culvert that was already cut out flush to the bottom of the culvert, and now you drop it another you know, two, four, six inches here. Well, now you're going to create a hole, and you're going to create a puddle down by where that culvert where the water should flow through. So just be aware that your nudging arrows drops the whole grade line, not just um, everything above your outlet. I'm going to nudge back up to 0.5, which is where I started. And I'll explain why it says 0.5 here in a little bit. But that is your DGL offset taken in play. So on the top of the screen, we have a light bar. So for guys who are not running auto steer, you do have an indicator telling you how far left and right you are of your surveyed line. This line will display, you know, flash just like a light bar does. Otherwise, most guys, what they do is just turn their steering on and they will just record a contour line uh, as they as they ditch. So that is the main interface. That is a lot of what you guys will be doing. Again, to keep it simple for guys who are maybe a little bit overwhelmed or seem overwhelmed, all it is is start survey, drive your ditch, stop survey, and turn your auto enable on. SD Drain is going to do a great job to design a best fit ditch for you. Um, so yeah, just go ahead, start survey, stop survey, auto enable. Next, we're going to go through, so I should mention something too. On the side profile, if you click here, you can see a little bit of, of data. So design depth, that's going to be how much dirt you're taking out, roughly 1.23 feet. Uh, it also gives you an elevation of what at grade is. So uh, just some information that you guys can see uh, there if you tap on the side profile. Next, we'll go through settings. So I'm going to start at the Top right, we will start with project. If you click on this, you can see we have new project. So when you guys are working in that field, I would just keep creating ditches. So you get done with one ditch, all you do is move to the next ditch and hit start survey. If you're going to change fields, you would go back to this new project and it'll bring you back to uh, this current window right here. So back to new project. And now we have <clears throat> our old project here. I'm going to click on the one that I was just in. I'm going to hit continue and then start project. That'll bring you back to that page. Settings, project, and layers. This is going to bring you back to that layers tab. So if you forgot or wanted to change the maps that you have loaded, you can go through here and change those and then just get back into your project by hitting start project. So settings, project, save load settings. This is where you guys, if you have multiple implements, you guys can save all of the parameters. So when you guys do all your measurements, so your GPS height, your blade to ground, uh, your fore aft, left and right settings, you guys can save those individual parameters to each of the test slots. So whether you have a box blade, a scraper, a rotary ditcher, you can save everything in this list. And that just makes it easy when you guys switch implements to load the correct settings. I think what we've done too is for guys as a, as a best practice, a suggestion, before you do a program update, if you just make sure that you've um, saved the settings that you have for your current implement and your your tractor, um, that way, if for some reason anything gets messed up during the uh, um, the software update, you could you have a backup that you can just automatically load in the the settings that you previously had for what was going on uh, with the machine and all your different settings for the scraper or whatever that you're using. Yeah, correct. Yep, it's always good to have a backup. Uh, so that is the save load settings tab. Next one we're going to get into is GPS. So if I click on GPS, so again, we are in from the main screen or the main run screen, we are in settings, GPS. And we're going to start with GPS control. This is just where you guys connect to your GPS, depending on the COM port and configuration that you have set up. So if you're wireless running the new stuff, you will select wireless from the, these radio buttons here. Otherwise, if you're running hardwired on some of the older computers, uh, you'll most likely be selecting serial. 
and then a, the correct COM port and baud rate for your setup. Then just hit start. You should see GPS detected under status, and then a whole bunch of settings here, or a whole bunch of information here will pop up telling you things are good. So GPS data will be the next one. So here we've got some live data coming in. This is everything that you can see from your receiver. So date time, all these different things. Uh, fix quality, that's going to be the most important one. It has to say RTK fix. If it does not, SD drain is going to yell at you, make that Pac-Man noise. Everybody's kind of heard that. It gets really annoying. <laughs> but uh, and that's the other thing is SD drain is going to yell at you if something is wrong. So whether it's GPS related, DAC related, it'll tell you when things are disconnected and reconnected and stuff like that. So some things to look for here, if you're having GPS issues, most of the time it's gonna be a diff age issue. And usually this comes up uh, when you are too far away from your tower or source of correction, so your base station. Um, if it gets above five seconds, it is going to bark and say, hey, you're getting, it, it pretty much means you're too far or there's an antenna issue that you have for communication from your base station. So you'll have data in here when you actually have GPS coming in. Next page, satellites. This gives you a page, you know, a view of what satellites you are you are reading from. GPS criteria do not go in there. Benchmarks. This is the next tab. So we have either map or GPS benchmarks. For guys wanting to, let's just say your map gets screwed up on the overhead and your cursor is not exactly where it should be when you're trying to utilize the maps. What you can do, instead of having to bring this data back into your office computer and get it reprocessed, you can actually correct that map in the program with the map benchmark function. And I have a video to show you that here later. The other option is benchmark or GPS benchmark. So this is an actual benchmark that you get set in your field, a more permanent one that you can come back to uh, day to day. A lot of guys don't use this in ditch uh, because it's pretty simple to just go ahead and, and resurvey a ditch um, if you haven't finished working on it. And that's I think, is the easiest way so guys don't have to use this. But uh, it's definitely in there for guys who want to use the actual GPS benchmark for reference. DAC, DAC control is the next one here. Just like GPS control, it should say DAC detected up in here. And depending on your configuration, again, You'll either be wireless or serial. Serial, select the correct COM port. Wireless uh, for the new. Back data. This will display the slope sensor data coming from your controller, and that's really all it displays is the pitch and roll, x rotation, you know, y z rotation, stuff like that. So that is the DAC data screen. Not a whole lot in there, but it does give you some information if you're running a slope sensor. DAC settings, this is a page um, that just shows kind of, it's kind of your setup page for guys. If you do run a slope sensor, if you don't run a slope sensor, you probably won't be coming into this page at all, uh, but just shows you things that you need to check on. So slope sensor, pitch and roll messages, roll control for guys running slope sensors on like a box plate or something. And depending on your configuration, you might check the CAN joystick or analog joystick uh, from the list. So that, those are your DAC settings. DAC config, I cannot actually get into because I don't have a controller. So DAC is not connected. Um, you can't actually go in there. So I'm just gonna hit okay there. Visual is the next button I'm gonna go over. So these are all of your colors. So if you select on graph, you can change any color that you see displayed in the window below. So anything that you don't like, so fill area, grade line, ground line, stuff like that, you guys can change these colors just by tapping on uh, the window here. Um, and then along with your line widths, indicator size, stuff like that, if you want a bigger a blade indicator, you can see how that changes up and down. Line widths as well. So we'll just get it back to normal. Uh, but then also your graph legend, you can see we have a full size graph displayed below. Here is a hidden, and then here is a minimal size. You can see that it just displays cut, fill yards, length, and then slope. I really like the minimal size. Um, or hidden, just because it gives you a bigger side profile view. Well, minimal size is what I'm going to leave up. Next page is going to be your indicator bar. 
don't change anything right here. So these these numbers right here, I would recommend not changing those. Uh, just leave them as defaults. You can opt to show this on your work screen if you want to or don't want to see it. Uh, and also there's a colorblind friendly. So this bar, notice this is your nudge arrow. It also acts as a blade target uh, indicator. So when your blade is on target where it needs to be, this will display green, um, uh, green, yellow, or red. And what happens if you turn the colorblind friendly option on, it actually turns that to a grayscale. So instead of the green, yellow, and red, it will be just different shades of gray being displayed as an indicator. That is the indicator bar. Next, we have the map button. And again, it's anything on the map. So your survey lines, your GPS symbol, this, this is referring to your above overhead map. If you click on these, you can change color size. Survey lines, if you want those to be a little bit thicker, you can change that as well. GPS symbol, if you like the size or you want that symbol to be a little bit bigger, this is your vehicle symbol that rotates and drives with you as you're moving throughout the field. Um, and then otherwise, there's an outline. You can change the outline size on that vehicle as well. So this is kind of, these are the map settings that you guys can change. Um, so visual, map, now we'll go to units. So for guys running in different parts of the world, you guys can select what you want to see. So miles per hour and altitude and feet, uh, UTM, stuff like that. You guys can go in here and change those as well. Flagging and logging. This is another, these are the new features that we added this year. So uh, the manual flags button, this is where you guys can come in and edit these flags that are being dropped. So flag four, um, you know, station, gold, rock. Hopefully you guys are finding gold. Um, but you can drop different colors of flags. So you get four flags to drop on the window. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is the enable visual logging. So if you check this on, this is that feature that you guys can actually record the RTK data coming in from your receiver. And you can take this data, export it, and create topography maps out of it. Um, you cannot do it in the program, but you can export this data. So for guys who are in a floodplain and it floods every year, well, they don't get you don't get new LIDAR every single year. But you can still use this to get more current data by surveying that field. And we recommend, you know, every 40 foot swath widths, and then if you can do 40 foot or 50 foot, stuff like that. And th then if you can drive every ditch bottom, uh, we really encourage that. So that'll just get you the most accurate data throughout that field. Visual, flagging, and logging. Next, we're going to get into program. I'm going to go over to profile. If I click on that, I've got my profile settings. I've got minimum grade, maximum grade. Uh, stuff like that. So if you tap on these, you can see that it'll give you a definition of everything um, related to this setting. So min grade, max grade, pass depth is going to be however many inches your scraper or ditcher will cut every time you make a pass. Um, and I'll talk about these a little bit more, but your pass lines refer to I nudge down. Let's just say my ditch looked like this. Every one of these black lines, these solid lines, is what we call a pass line. So those help your cut modes uh, cut. And we'll go over that later here with the video. Settings, program, profile. Uh, we are talking about your pass depth there. DGL offset, what this is, is just an extra amount of dirt that gets cut out throughout the whole ditch. So an extra half inch, even in areas that don't need dirt cut out, it's still gonna cut out um, a little bit of dirt there. And guys like this feature because then it creates a nice smooth ditch bottom, it gets rid of ruts and stuff like that. Um, otherwise, we have large nudge, small nudge are the next two settings. And you guys can predetermine or select what you want your large and small nudge to change. And that's referring to, so this is your large nudge, this is your small nudge, and both up and down, down direction. Cut beyond profile, what this does is, let's just say you can't survey all the way up to a culvert. You can turn this feature on, um, and then what it does, it'll extend an imaginary line at a minimum grade 100 feet before and after your survey. That way, if you can't survey all the way up to something, it still gives you the option to cut um, at a distance of 100 feet beyond. Survey both directions. I recommend just turning this feature on. It'll allow you to survey from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top 
of that dish. So check it on and you hit start survey. It's going to ask you, you, are you surveying to the outlet or from the outlet? And you just go ahead and make that, that decision. So that is survey both directions. Laser level is exactly what it sounds like. When you guys turn this on, it's going to shoot a straight grade A to B. The only difference is, is that instead of, you know, like a laser, you have to reset up that laser every time you turn. Well, this you can survey, and you survey in an S if you wanted to, and it's still going to create a straight laser cut throughout that S cut ditch. So these are your profile settings. Um, again, guys run defaults, or a lot of guys do run defaults, and they are pretty happy with them. So a program profile. Next, we're going to go to machine. Again, this is your initial setup. So when you guys get everything plugged in, GPS rolling, uh, RTK GPS coming in, you guys can get in here and set up those, those settings. So blade to ground, you need to measure this. Do not do it with a tape measure. We definitely recommend using this calculator. And this is an automatic function. So when you click on this, it's going to walk you through a wizard. It'll tell you to put the blade on the ground, hit OK, lift the blade up, hit OK, and a number will appear in here. Uh, so then I, what I would do is get the rest of these measured in, get your blade width measured in. If you click on these, it's going to give you examples of what everything means. Uh, but what I would do, once you get your blade to ground set, I would run a quick ditch and, and test ditch. So start survey, stop survey, turn around, start cutting, and see where your blade is controlling. If it's above where it should be, or you think it is, go ahead and adjust this number a little bit. But if it's below, again, go ahead and adjust this number. We want to make sure that this number is set um, correctly, or else you could be cutting out a lot more dirt than you want to, or not cutting out enough. Look at this. Make sure you get your blade to ground set correctly. We did have one of the guys at training was talking about he was going in one direction, and it seemed like it was cutting fine, and then he went back the opposite direction, and the blade was off a little bit. When, what were you saying would be one of the issues maybe to look at uh, for that? Yep, I would I would look at your four aft left and right settings. So usually, you, you know, most scrapers these days are built uh, with the receiver pretty well over the blade. Uh, so we haven't had too many issues with having to put these settings in. But if you do run into that, go ahead and check your four aft, your, or actually it's mostly you're gonna be your four and a half settings. So that's before or behind the blade. So you guys see this right here. So I would check that if that, that's what's happening. Next button is gonna be your ditch. So we can get in here. These are all of your ditch, set, ditch settings. So again, click on them. You'll see exactly what it's talking about. So this is your ditch width right here. Um, set that a little bit wider than your scraper. The reason is, is that we only let you control inside of this parameter. So inside of your ditch width um, or your backslope parameters is where we will allow you to control. Control Anytime that you're outside, um, it's going to stop controlling, and that auto enable button will display uh, out of range. So make sure this is set a little bit wider than your scraper. Uh, and go through here, and however you want to set up your backslope width, go ahead. Usually guys will run, you know, if you're trying to get a flex head through, one to 60 is a pretty nice uh, gradual change. Um, so that's one foot rise over 60 feet of run. Otherwise, you know, it all depends on how your field looks. If it's super flat, you can go flatter. It's a lot easier. But if not, just try and get this in there as best you can. Backslope ditch width, again, that remember that's between dash lines. So dash line to dash line is going to be your backslope ditch width. And then from dash line out to solid line is your backslope width. Backslope grade, this is just a default number that you guys can set. So if you like a certain number to be cut to your ditches uh, on your backslopes, go ahead and, and just select that uh, as a one to whatever this number is. Backslope surveying, so this is just a surveying feature. And I'll go through this with a video as well. But you can actually survey the outermost part of your backslopes. Uh, that way you don't have to set this number. Your survey automatically does it, and I'll show them that with the video. Backslope mirroring, just when you survey one side, it'll just reflect it to the opposite. And then parabolic ditch for guys who are creating waterways. Some settings there that you need to control. Next button is going to be your support tab. So this is where you find all of your product information. So product you know, SD ditch version 3.0.10. That is the most current version um, as, is, as of February 2023. Registration status, uh, stuff like that. This has to say registered. I'm just running a trial version of the 
system, but it has to say registered in order to get new updates. Uh, if it is not, please contact your dealer and we can help you guys get that settled out. Your name, PO number, stuff like that. Um, some of the buttons down here, this is your check for updates. So when you connect your computer to a Wi-Fi access point, come into this page and click check for updates and you'll find the most recent versions. Otherwise, when you're also connected to Wi-Fi, you can click the online help button and this will allow us to actually log into your computer to help you guys out. License agreement, just some fun reading material if you want to read that. Otherwise, there is also a manual in here. If you're looking for anything specific, click on the manual and it'll open up a PDF version of that. Program export. We have two different export functions. We have a GPS log, and that's pertaining to the logging feature. So that GPS logging feature that I was talking about, um, you can export that GPS log as a shape file and then take that and put it into any program you might have. Then also we have export project, and this is all of the literal raw data, all of your GPS data that you collected when you were cutting a ditch, all of your ditch lines, cut lines, survey lines, everything. If you want to export the project, uh, you can export all of that as well. That is the program button. Below us, below that in settings, we have a background map selector button. So you can see I'm just overlaying as I click this, between the so between your background map and then your elevation map uh, you can see how those change and this button moves to your settings button when you have auto enabled we don't want you to change settings as you're operating that's why this settings button goes away and it actually turns into this map flip button that's what you want to call it so below that we have min close this is how you shut the program down so minimize or min close. Do not just use the power button on the computer. You want to go through this process. So go to min close and just hit shut down if you want to shut everything off for the night. Otherwise, just hit close if you want to exit SD drain. So really, that is about uh, everything with the main interface and running SD drain. I have some videos that I'm going to show you uh, in a bit here um, on the specific functions of some of the surveyed backslope, you know, backslope cutting, ditch cutting, cut modes, stuff like that. So stay tuned. Okay, so some of the things that we didn't talk about when we were in the main interface uh, in the program, you have some editable buttons that you guys can change to display the information that you want to see. So if you right click or long press on any of these windows in the red rectangles, uh, you'll guys get this, you'll get this menu to appear and you can select anything from this list to display on your interface. So just some editable things there. The next thing we kind of went through were your start survey buttons. So you have start survey, stop survey, pause survey, and resume. So the ones that we haven't talked about are pause survey and resume. And what these do is if you're trying to survey, let's say a road ditch and you need to survey through a culvert, you'll hit pause survey on one side, drive to the other side, put your scraper in the bottom of the ditch, and then hit resume survey. And that way you get the whole culvert, uh, or at least a, you know, what could be the culvert elevation in that survey. So you can continue on cutting uh, with the with the culvert in your, your survey. So that's what pause and, pause and resume are used for. Surveying both directions. Again, this is what the window looks like when it pops up. So it'll ask you, are you going to the outlet or from the outlet? And based off the picture, you need to make that decision. So that is, Survey both directions and make sure that is checked on in your profile settings. Side profile, just some bits of information around that. You've got elevation on the left side of the screen. You've got a design grade line, a final grade line, and your pass lines. So the design grade line is the line that's going to be what SD drain gives you as a solution. The final grade line is where you are cutting to. So just think about that when you nudge up and down. That is the final grade line that you're moving. And all of the black lines in the green are going to be your pass lines. Uh, down below, you've got a legend like we talked about before. And this is what it's going to display after you have finished a survey. So the final grade line and the design grade line, if you're like your DGL offset, so your design grade line offset, that's like a, a, a value you can put in. If that's if the design grade line offset is zero, then final grade line and design grade line would be the same line. But if you put it in as like uh, 
half an inch than the final grade line. That's why it shows up as an offset um, on the design. Am I right on that? Yes, correct. Yep. OK. Editing survey ditches. We went through this window, but that is the edit button in the side profile. So if you tap on that, uh, you remember place those two points and you can edit the way that this ditch has been created. You can change your min slope, um, your max slope, uh, stuff like that as well. So that is the edit button. Auto button. Remember, this is what you have to turn on once you get your survey complete. Turn your auto disable to auto enable. And then you'll enable your 1 3 switch, or John Deere would be clicking your SCV forward. Uh, cat tractors, which I haven't mentioned, those are automatically on by default. So you'll just turn it on and off with the screen. Ditch cut settings. So this is uh, in your profile uh, as well. So pass depth, uh, that's going to be each one of those solid lines that display into the green. You'll have a pass depth related to this setting right here. So this would be a one inch pass depth, and those lines will actually be in the increments that you have programmed. DGL offset, so 0.5, uh, that is gonna be that offset that Scott was talking about. It's just a little bit extra dirt that it takes out throughout the whole, whole ditch. And the pass depth is really, that's kind of like the, the sweet spot of whatever your, um, uh, what, is a, what is a comfortable sweet spot that you're gonna be taking out dirt you know, that particular day, soil conditions, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, you could change that if you wanted to, if you were working in, depending on what your soil type is, but it's it's that, you know, that sweet amount of soil that you can like uh, get into your scraper and it just rolls in all super nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. So different cutting modes, I'm gonna go through these three. There's design, pass, and single. The first one we're gonna talk about is design. Do you guys see these pass lines here? Well, what design is going to do, so notice I'm in D times one, that is design times one. I'm taking one pass line at a time. It's going to automatically take the uppermost pass line, so the top green line that's available. It's going to keep working its way uh, throughout the green and work its way down to your, your finished grade. So watch as I enter. My vehicle is now going to enter uh, my survey. You can see here my blade indicator. It's going to lift up a little bit. Uh, move to the next line, lift up a little bit, move to the next line, and so on throughout this whole green section here. Um, so this is how design works. And when you come back to take your next pass, it's automatically going to grab the next line or portion of the lines that are available. This is design times one. And I apologize, when I select or press these buttons, they're not going to appear because my screen recorder didn't uh, record those buttons being pressed. So we get to the end here. I'm going to skip ahead of here a little bit because all I do here is turn around. Um, anytime that you are not within an area that's got a large portion of green to take out, it's going to cut to final grade. So it'll always just skim the bottom of the ground whenever you are not in these areas. So watch as I turn around here. I'm in design times two now. Just be aware of that when I come back. Fast forward here. Now watch as I enter this green area. It's going to take out two lines instead of just one because I'm in design times two. It's going to hop up here. Now it's going to take these next two lines throughout the whole ditch. So this is design mode, D times one, D times two, and D times three. see how it bumped down there because there were two lines there to take. Now it's just going to cut to final grade. Single cut is the next one that we're going to go through. I'm going to hit play here. So single cut is going to take everything at once. Notice all of the pass lines disappeared and now we only have um, green to take away. So it's going to cut out all of the green at one cut. This works nice for guys who are just cleaning out ditches for the year. Uh, you guys can just go here. Uh, if you have ditches that look, there's a little bit of green throughout the whole ditch, I would just leave it in single, take one pass and be done. When you get to areas like this, you can nudge your grade line up and that's also gonna push your blade up to wherever 
your final grade line moves to. So notice the red here, that's your designed grade line. Well, this is your final grade line that you're actually moving. Um, so I'm gonna nudge up in single mode. I'm nudged up four inches, top left corner. But once I get to the end here and I'm ready to turn around, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna nudge my arrow down, you know, two more inches and then two more inches of green will show up that you can take out. Here we get to the end. And I'm gonna nudge back down. You guys can see that here. Nudge two inches down. Now I've got well, actually three inches down. So I've got three more inches of dirt that I can cut out. So that is single cut. Pass cut, this one works a little bit differently. You can notice I'm in single right now. You can change any of these at any time as you're cutting. So single, I'm gonna take out this amount of dirt uh, and then I'm gonna get up to this area. And I think I switched to uh, design mode for just a blip second here so single design but now i'm going to switch to pass and i'm going to switch to pass three so pass one two and three this line is only going to cut to the pass that you've selected and it'll automatically populate the top the top three lines that are available so if there are seven lines it'll be seven six five that you'll see show up around this um, this button here so pass three is only going to cut to line three as you guys move back and forth And anywhere outside of pass three, it's going to either cut to final grade if there's nothing to cut out, um, or it'll only touch pass line three. That is pass cut. So cutting back slope, you've got some windows here. So this is your back slope window when you've actually got data coming in. You've got a blade indicator right here, a live slope reading right here, and then this is your set slope uh, ratio. So just some. You know, remember that screen here, we're looking at the solid line, dash line, dash line, solid line, this representation there. So here cutting back slope, just a short video to show you what it looks like when you're cutting. Notice I'm in the back slope area and my blade uh, is going to be cutting uh, throughout this area here. And you'll see it just move up and down. I get to the end here, just keep on going. Um, I do have uh, a slope sensor on this so you can see that it's controlling uh, the tilt and showing how much slope is on my blade. So that is cutting back slope. Just a short clip to show you uh, what that looks like. And just note you don't have those cutting features in the back slope area. So everything is a single cut. So if there's a lot of dirt to take out in your back slope area, you might end up nudging that final grade line up. So it'll actually move this black line um, up according to how many inches you've nudged. Surveyed backslope, this is a new feature that we added. So in this video, I already have backslope or my, my ditch bottom surveyed, and I'm just gonna move out to survey my backslope. So with that feature added, when you hit start survey, it's gonna ask you, are you surveying a ditch bottom? Um, so a new ditch, or are you surveying a backslope? So start survey, and then it'll ask me, I'll say backslope. Um, now I'm gonna survey this backslope here. So I'm just gonna fast forward here a little bit because all I'm doing is performing a survey. You can drive wherever you want. So notice I'm gonna take a hard right here and just cut across. So that's also gonna create um, its own profile once you've surveyed this. So I'm gonna cut ahead here. So you can see I'll get to the end and I'll hit stop survey. Now it replaced that solid line that was on this side with a uh, curved survey line. You can drive wherever you want. Um, so now I'm gonna loop around and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hit start survey. Uh, once I get to the opposite side, there's no telling, you know, left and right, which side are you doing? It automatically detects what line to replace based off of your location when you perform a survey. So start survey, back slope. Now I'm gonna drive this line just like I did the previous. I'm gonna fast forward here just a little bit, driving, driving, driving. And I will get to the end of this run and hit stop survey. Turn my back slope on in my back slope window and watch as I change direction. This is all a directional window. So as I'm heading away, the wider side is on the left. And when I turn around, it's gonna flip flop. The wider side is now on the right. So it's all directional based off of which way you are heading in the ditch. So when this screen is flip flopping back and forth, and you think it's doing something wrong, it's actually just flipping direction. So I'm gonna enter this area 
very auto enabled. You'll see my blade now drop, so it's sending a down command up here. Now you can see it's going to match the grade of your back slope. Um, so it will change. You see how it's changing? You've got a live slope rating here, one to 42. So this is all predetermined by your survey that you performed. So it's a 152. It's gradually changing as you know, based off of your survey points along this line out here. Uh, you cannot change your slope anymore. So this is all just set. It's all set based off of your survey. So this is work. This works for guys who are in rolling hill areas. Because normally, if you just use this number right here, it would cut your whole ditch to this static number. Well, this when you survey, you're creating a dynamic or an ever-changing backslope ratio throughout that whole backslope. Um, and you can see that by um, how far, how tall these um, outside edges go up and down. So that is surveyed backslope. Surveyed backslope with mirroring. And it's exactly how it sounds. I'm going to survey this left side of the ditch. So I'll get to the end here. Um, hit start survey, select back slope. And now I'm just going to survey this back side of the ditch. I'm going to be driving in the field here. And once I get to the end, I'm going to hit stop survey. It's going to reflect. So you see it replaced both sides with my new survey ditch. And it actually uh, just duplicates uh, the data to each side of the ditch. So you can see how those are the exact same each side of your survey ditch. So backsloping with mirroring, if you guys need to make things exactly the same throughout your ditch. Parabolic ditches, this is another feature that we added. So creating U-shaped ditches versus the V-shaped that um, we just saw. So parabolic, you can still use all of your backslope surveying features with this, but now you're just creating a U-shaped ditch as well. Uh, there's a quarter point setting that you'll actually set up. So once you get you know, everything situated, your widths, so all of your ditch widths, stuff like that, uh, based off of your plan that you have uh, drawn up, you guys can create uh, waterways at a parabolic ditch bottom, so a nice rounded bottom. And there is a half of backslope width value. So See that in here, depth at half back slope width set to 0 0.75. And all that is is a percent of how deep your ditch is being cut to. So it's, if it's being cut to a foot deep here, um, you just need to set this to a percent that you need your quarter points at. And just whatever makes sense, you'll have to do a little bit of math um, based off of your, your plan that you're given. So a 12 inch deep cut with a 0.75 depth at half back slope width will be a nine inch depth at your quarter point. So here is parabolic, and I'm actually going to show you guys how to set up a more so with stations. I'm going to use the flagging feature as well. I'm getting into a new project here, and I'm just going to start up. So start, I'm going to hit, hit the flag, and I'm going to drop a station flag. That's just what I have it named as. So you'll see it drop on my indicator. I'm going to hit start survey. I'm going to go to outlet, and I'm going to drive this survey quick here. So I'm going to survey the first station. You'll see me drive. I then get to the end, I hit stop survey. I mark it out, stop survey. Now I'm just gonna hit start survey again, keep the survey for future use to outlet, and I'm gonna drive the second station. Here we go, surveying, uh, surveying. I get to the end, I'm gonna mark it out, station end, stop survey. Then uh, you can just, either one works here, but uh, I will start my survey again and survey the third station. So two outlet again. Now I'm just going to survey and continue on with this third survey. So notice I've got a couple here now. I've got two ditches or two stations that I've surveyed. Um, this is the third one. And I've got them all marked out. You don't have to use the flags, but you I just do it because it just it's a good visual so you can see where the end of the ditch is. So station and stop survey. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on each individual line on the overhead map. I'm going to go to the edit window and change those grades to whatever they tell you in your plan. So I'm going to, I'm just, I don't have a plan, but I'm just going to change them to something that I see uh, fits decently uh, in the lines. So I'm going to keep changing. Uh, we'll get up to, you know, 0.5 grade. 
I did, and that all depends on to what your plan says. So I'm going to click the next line up here, edit, and I'm going to change my grade to whatever my uh, plan calls for. So I switched it there. Next line, edit, change my grade to whatever the plan. And this is all just an example I have to show you guys how it works or how you can make it work. So now I've got all three of my ditches laid out. I'm going to go auto enabled and I can now start cutting. Uh, and you switch, all you do to switch ditches is just tap on the above ditch that you want to cut on. So there, I've got this green one selected. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to start cutting on this ditch. So watch now, uh, when you transition between stations, all you do is tap on the next station and it'll blend it uh, and start cutting on the next survey. So if I go here, I'm going to start cutting, keep cutting. Uh, we'll get to the end here. Notice my blade indicator. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap on the next one and it'll just keep on cutting. So just leave your auto enabled. And as you grab the next ditch, it's just going to um, grab the next set of elevation. Keep on going, keep on going. We'll get to the end, switch it, and you see that it just blended up to this one. It's I'm using a test rig, so it it it's it can only go so fast. Uh, this was a big hump I had to drive over. Um, but now um, I'm going to finish this out. Notice I'm in single cut. I'm just taking everything out just for an example, but you can be in design right now as well. So I'll get to the end of this ditch. I mean, I'm actually going to turn on my parabolic, uh, my back slope window and display the parabolic setting here. So I get to the end. Hey, Luke, for this, for this example, were you running in laser mode? Uh, yes, I was, I was in laser mode. Yep, I had laser mode on. Okay. Yep. Oh, that's good to get, make sure that's uh, understood. Um, I'm going to turn my back slope window on, turn this on. And now when I hit auto enabled, you'll see a U shaped ditch here versus a V shape. So I'll get auto enabled here shortly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my slope ratio. Um, and really, um, that's kind of up to you to determine you know how steep it's going to be um, but i'm going to put it at a one to 45 so one foot rise 45 feet of run one to 45 you can see how that kind of looks here and now i'm actually just going to start cutting um, and driving into my back slope area i don't have a slope sensor active on this so notice how my blade is not tilting um, this is just showing that you don't need a slope sensor to do that to do your back slopes um, but this is just what it's going to look like. It'll always think that your blade is flat in comparison to a uh, tilted blade like throughout your ditch. So the same thing when you go between your your uh, back slope areas in the different stations. All you do is click on the next line, and it will grab and automatically start cutting to that location. So I'm still auto enabled, and you can see your blade adjusting up and down as you move throughout your back slope area. Here, I'm going to get to the next station and just simply click on that blue. Click it there. And start cutting. Now you can see my blade dropping or raising, depending on, you know, however it needs to control. So hopefully that's a good explanation. That's something that you guys can follow for creating waterways. That is uh, parabolic in a nutshell. Slope sensor benefits, again, this is just controlling the cross slope or just giving you a, an indicator to show what your scraper, how your scraper is tilted. Uh, you guys can get these uh, from your dealers, uh, but just see in the picture there on the left, you can see that that box blade is tilted um, and we are controlling the cross slope. Building a level pad, so for guys wanting to clear out an area for a bin site or a shop pad, you guys can set these settings according. So you'll go into your profile settings, turn laser level on, and then you'll change your grade to whatever you want. In this uh, example, it's gonna be zero. Uh, and then you also go to your ditch settings. So program ditch, change your ditch settings to all of the um, specifics that you need. So however wide you want that to be, uh, you need to change that as well. So I would just set everything to 300 feet. That's the new expanded area that we give you. So 300 foot ditch width, 300 foot back slope and 300 foot uh, back slope ditch. 
let's just go 300 to all of them uh, and then set your backslope grade to zero. So one to zero is gonna be perfectly flat in that backslope area. Uh, and then what you do is you'll just survey that run where you wanna make it perfectly flat, uh, set your elevation that you wanna finish out at, um, and then go ahead and just start moving dirt back and forth. Really my um, recommendation or what I recommend is just, if there's a lot of dirt to cut out and you know um, that you've got two feet of dirt to cut out in a certain area, just start moving out. I wouldn't even turn the auto on um, until you get a little bit closer to your final grade because uh, you know you have to move a lot of dirt. So if I'm doing my math correctly, we moved from like a 300 foot pad that you could do to a 900 foot pad wide. Correct. You have a 300 foot uh, backslope ditch width from the center from dash line to dash line, and then 300 feet between dashed and solid line on both sides. So 300, 300, and 300, so 900 feet. Okay. Yep. Save load settings. We went through this page already, but you can opt or save your uh, implement settings and switch between them easily just by tapping on the slot uh, numbers there on the left. GPS menu just kind of showing you guys what this looks like when you have GPS data in and connected to your computer. Again, guys running the wireless, you'll have a wireless tab down here. This is an older picture, unfortunately, but uh, it'll show wireless connection instead of serial. GPS data, again, showing you guys what RTK fix, what the data looks like coming in, um, if you guys want to see that. So fix quality has to be RTK fix, and that's really the main thing to look for. Uh, you can't operate without it, so get that set. Benchmarks, so this is creating new benchmarks from GPS. Again, not a lot of guys use it, but you can definitely do it. So if you go to settings, bottom right, then go to GPS. The first tab over would be your benchmarks. So this is how you would create it. You would click tap on GPS, and then you would park in the location you want to start that benchmark, and then hit start. And your bar down here, your status bar is going to fill up. And then once it's full, you'll have a little blue dot or a little green uh, dot here indicating your benchmark area. And then when you come back to correct off of it, you will park over it, select it from the list, and hit start to correct. The other benchmark is a map benchmark. And what this is used for is correcting that. Uh, background image without having to bring it back to the office. So my, I'm actually sitting in this crossroads right here on the map. My cursor is up here in the field or in the yard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to settings, then I'm going to go to GPS, and I'm going to click benchmarks, and it's going to open up the page here, and I'm going to click on map. It's going to zoom in and it's going to walk me through a wizard. So it'll tell you to actually click in the location you're sitting. So I'm going to actually tap. I'll place an X right here, and then I'm gonna hit OK, and then I'm gonna hit Start to Correct. And what's gonna happen is, is my status bar is going to load, so it's collecting points, collecting points, and then once it gets to you know, full position, it's gonna zap my cursor from there down to that square, or where I told it where I was. Make sure that you park the scraper in that area and do not park the tractor, or else you're still gonna be probably about 15 feet off of where you need to be. So make sure uh, you put your scraper into that position and not the tractor. DAC control is showing you two different setups. We have a serial version versus a wireless. So DAC detected, both displaying on each of those. DAC data, just showing the slope data coming in. Again, you can see your pitch roll, XYZ rotation, uh, stuff like that with the slope sensor. DAC settings, just kind of showing you what that page looks like when you have stuff selected. Again, guys, if you want to see slope sensor data, just check bar, check box, check this box right here. Make sure you have slope sensor, pitch roll, and then roll control checked for running like a running the tilt on a box blade. Um, it will automatically pick up what's unlocked on your controller. So if you're um, you know just coming back year to year, it will automatically um, keep those unlocked for you. Google Earth for guys exporting the raw data. You guys can export that raw data and get a KML file. And then if you double click that file, it'll automatically open up in Google Earth. You do have to download Google Earth free. It, or first, it's free to you. Um, you can either go 
go to file, import, and select the raw data. So the cut lines that you want to see. Otherwise, what you can do is just double click on that KML file um, and it'll open it up into Google Earth as long as it's downloaded. So if you upload stuff to Google Earth manually, you can select a color scheme and stuff like that that you want to see. Save it as a file and you can actually print this off. So once you get an overhead view going, uh, you can save this as a field. There's a from the toolbar right up here, there's like a print and there's an add a legend, add a graph. So you can you can add different titles and stuff like that to the field if you wanted to print this. What to look for for your DAC connection. So again, this is just kind of starting up for the year. Uh, you'll want to make sure there's a blue light on your DAC 8000. This is all for wireless controlling. So if you're connected wirelessly, first off, you want your red power lights. That indicates that there's power coming to the DAC. Position seven or the green light is your GPS data or slope sensor data. Make sure that's flickering. And then the blue light is going to be your connection to the computer. That'll flash about once a second. So just check that. Uh, usually, if something's wrong this way, the easiest way to fix it is just to uh, power cycle or turn the power off on everything and turn it back on. So for right away when you're setting up, you have connection issues, I just go ahead here and check that. DAC 8000 basic tuning. I'm going to try and explain this and hopefully it makes sense. Um, so DAC 8000 basic tuning number one should be number four. So you want to make sure your hydraulic flow is set to 65-70%. Then select your tractor or external valve from the list. Hit open configuration. And then number two, you'll adjust your sliders until the implement moves. So positive for the plus slider, you'll slide this up. And the minus that will be an up direction, and then minus will be a down direction. And you'll need to usually defaults are pretty close to where you need to be. So once you load a default, it's going to be really close. So you can just use the arrow buttons uh, to move the slider up and down. Um, I'm going to try and explain this how the DAC controls John Deere and Case tractors. So they what they do is they work off of a five volt system, and at 50% of that system voltage, so two and a half volts, is an idle or zero movement. Anything above two and a half uh, volts is an up movement, and anything below two and a half volts is a down movement. And all, all we're doing when we're setting this, this first step with the sliders, uh, you can see that that's at 0.55, so 55% of five volts. So technically, it's an up movement because it's above two and a half volts, and anything 44% or 0.44 of five volts is going to be a down movement. So you're basically just setting the minimum amount of voltage it takes to move uh, your implement up and down. With John Deere tractors, you have to be moving to do this. So you'll move. I usually just drive in a circle, um, move, enable your number one, and then start adjusting these sliders. Case tractors, you can just be sitting still, and they let you actually tune that uh, by just turning on your number one switch. So the third part, so if after you have your slider set, the third thing, if it's still controlling kind of you know erratic, uh, you can add or subtract steps. So just type a number in here. I would add an increase or decrease by at least 10 every time you make a change here. So from 35, if it's if it's too uh, fast of movements or too jittery, I would add more steps. So the more steps you add, the slower it's going to respond, and the less steps, the faster. So adjust those. Adjust those according. Topography maps, just going to kind of go through these on how to read these. Again, when you guys get all of your maps from us, you get about 15 different printable versions, uh, PDF maps, what's going on in the field. And it's going to show you what each color stands for. So red or orange might be 800 feet of elevation, yellow might be 810, green might be 820. So you can see exactly where water flows uh, in this field. The top right corner. Uh, we also have a flow depressions map loaded. So any of the heart or the solid larger black lines that are displayed here, those are your major uh, flow lines. That's where you're potentially going to cut a ditch, or there's already a ditch cut. So you can see that based off the of LIDAR, exactly where to cut those ditches or make new ditches. On the left, we have a watersheds map. You can kind of see where all those breaks are. So here, Again, where the colors meet, that is where the watersheds break apart. So, got blue, red, 
you can see that all the blue naturally flows into these ditches and flows out and exit, exits the field here, and the same as up here um, for the red. Just showing you what topography maps kind of look like. Also, the next thing that we have is just an example of what a slope sensor can do. So this is mounted on a uh, Wolverine ditcher. And you can tell it's in wet conditions. These things are awesome for uh, throwing mud. Um, and really, you can put them through anything. So this is controlling the tilt on this slope sensor or on this ditcher, along with the elevation control. So for guys interested in that, go ahead and contact your dealer, and hopefully they can hopefully they can get you uh, figured out for what you need. So. Other than that, that's all we got, Scott. But yeah, if guys have any questions um, that they if you've taken a look through this video and thought of something, you can sure. Um, contact us at Rust Sales um, just by going to rustsales.com. There's the chat window there. You could ask a question uh, using the chat window. Someone will get back to you uh, either immediately or um, they'll be able to email you back. Um, there's also a chat window at sddrain.com. Um, so we monitor uh, both of those websites. Um, if we're uh, not available during the day, um, it'll send us a message and then we'll be able to get back to you.